These families' homes tremble and shake without warning. Walls and floors are cracked. They worry their houses will one day collapse. But it's no earthquake cluster rocking their suburb. Here we go. You actually physically can see the movements, the sway, like an earthquake. When the tremors happen, they shake the home from the front of the house right up to the back of the house, and it's just like an earthquake. So it literally shakes the house. So that a coast quake? So that was it, but that was a small blast. So it's still yes. pretty intense. Yeah. And you could feel it. Yeah. The house um, just rattles. If you're getting blasted twice a week over a period of 20 years, how is your house going to sustain that? It's the suburban estate where you'd be forgiven for thinking bombs were going off multiple times a week. Every new neighbour that has come close has, um, we see them running out the streets the first time they experience it because they thought it's an earthquake. And families fear these tremors are making their homes crumble. Our backyard is falling apart. Brick walls are splintered, garages cracked. Well, just on the garage floor, there'd probably be half a dozen. Pavers and windows, even ceilings inside, peeling apart. There's plaster in the land room that's fallen off. This man's downpipes are fractured. We've got to get someone to, to smash up the concrete, redo the concrete. So what's causing this neighbourhood to violently rattle? That's what I actually thought it was, earthquakes, until I started investigating and I found out there was two quarries up the road, up the hill from us. The open-cut mines operated by Hanson and Borrell are nestled on the doorsteps of thousands of homes in the middle of Melbourne's southeastern suburbs. I go out, outside because I don't want my house to on top of me. This isn't the way former accountant Michelle Stevenson thought she'd be spending her retirement. And some nights I'm literally up to 2am two, 2 in the morning preparing documents to fight. We're the little people and I guess no one seems to be listening to us. Mum of two, Giselle Esperon, has also turned private investigator, waking up before dawn to document handsome trucks she says are breaking curfew rules and operating before the 6am restriction. Some of the people said that they've got to clean their homes every single week because of the dust pollution. The quarry closest to homes is operated by Hanson Listerfield, which supplies rock to some of our biggest infrastructure projects. But a number of residents say it's left them tens of thousands of dollars out of pocket, constantly having to repair their properties. They have had absolutely no restitution or redress from Hanson or from anybody else. When they talk to you, what they will say is, oh, do you realise that your house could be, um, the construction might not be very sturdy. This area is all clay soil, therefore any damages that you've suffered uh, is not our blasting. It's all because of all this clay soil and poor construction. We've heard a lot of people have fixed up their homes and they've sold their homes and moved out because of the damage, it's just too much. The quarries claim they're not to blame, but these residents say surely all these cracks can't be one huge coincidence. It's got to be the shaking of the house that's doing it. How do you fight that except to call in your own engineers and what have you and try and prove it? So it's very hard to try and prove. If you say, it's, uh, I can't handle the vibrations, they'll say, oh, we've got all these monitors. Uh, would you like to have a monitor put up at your place? Michelle says those readings are in fact below the required limit, meaning the quarries aren't technically doing anything wrong. What we are now questioning is those uh, limits, are they reasonable? Financially, it will cost us a lot and we just can't afford to do those repairs constantly. Mum of two, Bernice Orfinelli, says the blasting is causing her backyard to slide. Our main concern is around the pool area where a big slab of concrete has broken away. And that's already damaged pumps connected to her pool. 
There needs to be an engineer to come out and have a look at it. I believe it could cost anything up to $40,000 to be fixed. With our population set to boom, Hanson wants to expand even further, something residents are desperately rallying to stop. Hanson wants to extend the life of its quarry by up to 25 years, meaning it could come as close as 400 metres to surrounding homes. That's despite a recommendation by the Victorian government that the buffer zone should be 500 metres. Hanson says it's exactly that, just a recommendation. If they are allowed to come any closer, I cannot envisage what life will be like. For the record, Hansen told a current affair, all blasts conducted at the Listerfield quarry have been less than one third of the Victorian government regulatory limit. Hansen commissioned an independent report into the potential long-term impacts of blasting, which found it will not cause permanent ground displacement or damage to houses. A few years ago, when it announced plans for an expansion, Hansen set up a community reference group to ease concerns. We were not treated very well and um, they tried to shut me up and then they tried to throw us out. Locals like Michelle have been less than impressed. She thinks it's little more than smoke and mirrors. The PR lady that they employed came over to us to say, oh, we're not going to come and talk to our group and stuff. Uh, we're going to have to ask you to leave. And she says Knox City Council hasn't been any better. When they want to plant a, a tree in my nature strip, they send me a, a letter. So I get a notification for that. But I get absolutely, absolute silence on this thing. The council told us should an application be received at some stage in the future, residents would be notified as part of the normal process. It's on public record that the quarry operators have offered use of surplus land for council to construct two sporting ovals and buildings for community use. If you found a pile of gold or rare earths or something under the Victorian Parliament House, are you going to flatten that and, and dig in and get it? You think it would happen? Absolutely not. Some of the residents are now considering a class action against Hanson Construction. The company's full statement and one from Boral and the local council is on our website.